Hey, hey everybody. everybody! Welcome to week three of the Kevin Baker Music Program Virtual Lessons. To recap, our first week we instructed you guys to write a poem, and then the second week you were supposed to turn it into a song. So make sure you go back to those videos and complete your song, and then give us a call whenever you're done, because we would love to hear them. That's right. So for this week, we have a couple of exercises for you to do at home in order to stay sharp on your instrument. We have a piano exercise, a guitar exercise, a vocal exercise, and we even have a drum exercise for some of our percussion students. We hope you guys enjoy. So today, we're going to learn how to memorize our piano notes with our eyes closed, and we're going to learn how to play a C scale, which is something that you guys haven't learned yet, and it's very fun to do. Here is middle C. So the way we find C is we find our two black keys, right, and we go right below. That's how we find C, okay? To find D, we go in between the two black keys, there's our D note. To find E, we find our two black keys again, and we'll go to the right. That's how we find our E note. So if, as long as you can find your two black keys with your eyes closed, you can find the C, the D, and the E. Okay, so that's how we're going to find those keys with our eyes closed. Let's move on to F. Here's F. Anyone want to guess how to find F? That's right. We find our three black keys, easy to find, and then we go to the left, to the left for F, almost kind of rhymes. Okay, we'll find our three black keys again. Let's find the two lower black keys, like this, and let's go in the middle, and that's how we find our G key. Okay, let's find now our two upper black keys, and let's go between them, and that's how we find our A key. We find our three black keys, and we're going to feel all three, and we're going to go to the right, and that's how we find our B key. And then we're back to C. That's how you can find any note with your eyes closed. Now I'm going to teach you how to, to warm up and to practice your dexterity with a C major scale. So make sure you stretch your fingers real good, don't want to pull any muscles. So we're going to start with our thumb on on a C note. This is middle C. So we're gonna go thumb, two, three, and then we're gonna curl the thumb under our three finger instead of using our four finger. We're gonna go thumb again, and then we end on middle, uh, the C above middle C where they're pinky. So again, it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And then we just walk it back down for our thumb, and then we get our three finger, and we cross over the thumb to our E, and back to our C. Great way to practice this is to start slow, and then to speed up. And you can do it over and over again. And when you get more comfortable, you can speed up. So the goal is to make all the notes sound the same and even. You don't want this. Some people do that when they first start out because their fingers aren't used to it yet. So when you practice slow is when you want to nail the tone and the rhythm. So once you hear it sounding good, then you can speed up. Okay, next up, for guitar, we're going to learn how to pick through a G major scale for a warm-up and for an exercise, and I'm going to teach you a chord progression that you can practice at home. So for a G major scale, we're going to start on this open G string, which is our third string, and we're going to go G, A, which is fret 2, we're going to go open B string, C, D, with this finger right here, open E, and then instead of an F, uh, F natural, which we've learned before, we're going to learn a new note today, 
second fret is an F sharp, and then we're gonna go to the third fret here. So all together it looks like this. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Notice how these three fingers are kind of floating over each fret. So when you play, you don't have to do any kind of weird maneuvers, which some beginners like to make things actually harder for themselves. Watch as my hands kind of float over the strings and only press when they need to. And that's how you play a G major scale. We're gonna teach you a couple chords for you to practice in order. So. Our first chord is going to be a C major, so you guys know this to be the, the highest four strings. We have first uh, fret on the second string with our index finger, our middle finger we have on the fourth string on the second fret. And we play those bottom four strings and that's how we have a C major. That's going to be our first chord. Second chord is going to be a G major chord which is often the first chord that we learn. So we are gonna do the third fret on the first string with our ring finger. One, two, three, four. The bottom four strings as well. That's a G chord. And we're gonna do a D major chord. Some of you guys know this, some of you don't. It's like a D major seven chord, but we're gonna switch this so it goes like this. I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see middle finger on the second fret first string ring finger third fret second string and index finger second fret third string so we're gonna go from our D major here to our D major 7 and then we're gonna go to an E minor which is the bottom four strings and our middle finger is gonna be on the fourth string second fret and we're just gonna play those four strings this is gonna be our bass note Okay, so now we're going to take those chords and we're going to put them together with a strong pattern that goes like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, and then we're back to the top again. So, C, G, D major, D major 7, E minor, and we're back to the C again. Yeah, on those D's, kind of do what we call a rake or a diamond and kind of strum the string slowly. It kind of gives it a nice finesse. And, and, yeah. So that is what you can do there. Okay, so this next section is for our vocal students or the ones that can sing and would like to have a little lesson. So the first thing that I always like to do before I sing is warm up my vocal cords because your vocal cords are a muscle just like the rest of the muscles in your body. And if you don't warm up, you could really hurt them. I actually hurt them when I was younger by not singing properly. So I wanna make sure that you guys do this right. So one of the most important things for singers is their diaphragm. You gotta to remember to breathe properly in order to support your voice. So when I sing, I always like to hold my hand right here and make sure that my stomach right around this area where our diaphragm is, is inflating like a balloon. So it's almost like if you're sucking in air through a straw, that'll typically activate this muscle. Now again, this is also a muscle, so you have to strengthen it in practice. I've taught many of the vocal students this already, so we'll move on. And we are going to do a warm up that will emphasize both your diaphragm and your vocal cords. So I like to start as low as I can possibly go. G. The first warm up that we're going to do emphasizes breathing and making sure that you're breathing properly. And it warms up with all different kinds of vowels. So make sure that you're focusing on your vowels, opening up the back of your throat in order to get these notes out, relaxing your body, shaking it all out, just to make sure that you're not tensing up at all because that's not gonna help and then using your diaphragm to breathe. So don't use your chest. Your, your shoulders should not be going up and down as you're singing. We're only using our diaphragm. So the phrase that we're going to sing is Z, he, he, bra, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's funny to say. Z, he, he, bra, ha, 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 va, z. And then 
you're going to go up a half step to the black key, G sharp. And so forth. You're going to go up the scale as far as you can go vocally, and that'll give you a really good warm up. All right, for our percussion students, we're going to do a slow to fast double stroke roll. So when we do the slow to fast, we want to let our fingers have more control of the stick in the beginning when it's slow. And then when we get faster, we're going to let that stick kind of work for us. So when you press down, like, like we said, the stick wants to bounce and it wants to hit more than once, but it's up to us. Oop, okay, see that? How we cut it off after two. And the way you get a consistent drum roll is when you have a good rhythm. So a fast, a fast roll, this will be our stick rhythm. So instead of single hits, we go to double hits at that same stick pattern. That's how we get a fast roll, okay? So we're gonna start slow, just doing individual hits. You can even start slower than that if you want. Get faster, maintain that speed. Now letting the stick work for us. Maintaining a good stroke. And when you go as fast as you can, then you kind of slow down. Regain that control back in your hands again. Single strokes. All the way back down. And that's a slow to fast roll. All right, last exercise for our percussion students is going to be a stick control exercise. Now stick control is everything. Uh, you want, just like in all kinds of music, you wanna be able to control what it is you're doing or else what else are you doing? You're just up there making random noises. So we want to control our accent is gonna be here and our tap is going to be here. So two very different velocities that we're gonna practice um, going between and having control in both. So the exercise is going to be this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tap. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and you can even do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we start with eight tap, eight accents, eight taps on right and left, and then four accents, four taps, two accents, two taps, and then one accent, one tap. So all together, it will sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'll go four, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So notice how when the left hand's not playing, it's not here, it's not scratching my head, not playing around, it's right here in the playing position, right over here in this quarter sized area that is our playing position. So when the left hand is just chilling, let it be ready. Two, four, five, and don't hit your stick like that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice playing position. The, the trick is 
when you go from a high stroke to a small stroke, there is a tendency to let the timing be off because your hand's not used to it, you know? Everyone likes to just hit very loud all the time. So you have to train your hand to, to do the stick control well. So that's why we do the taps and the accents together. So that's what you can practice at home.